Good morning. We're here for live yoga at your place and mine. Miley's here too. Um, and we'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but for now, just gather up your things. I'll give people a chance to hop on. Um, yoga mat, blanket, if you don't have a yoga mat. Um, you'll definitely want something soft to put under your knees today. So whether that's a couch pillow, um, a bed pillow, a folded up towel, just something soft to put your knees on. Um, we also may want to have something like this, a yoga block. If you don't have a, specifically a yoga block, you can use a book or um, something like that, but about this thickness or a little bit less to uh, bring to your practice today. So I'll put together a list of um, recommended basic props, but I don't want you to not participate today because you don't have any of these. They're just here to enhance your practice. So wait a little bit longer to get people situated and then we'll get started. I'm also trying something different today. So as of right now, I can't see who is on, but welcome. Um, I'm doing my phone up here on the window and then I have my computer here on the windowsill. So we'll see how that works today. But I think you'll get um, a bigger, better, longer view of the poses and stuff. So we'll see how that works. Oh, there's the name. Hi, Nicole, good morning. Um, so we're just gathering up props. Block today uh, would be recommended. If you don't have blocks at home, you can try to use like a thick, kind of classical hardbound book. Um, also would definitely recommend something soft to put underneath your knees for a couple of our lunge stretches. Um, could be a couch pillow, another kind of pillow, or a folded up towel or blanket. So those are the two important uh, things to grab today. So we'll wait just a couple more minutes um, while people are still joining and then we'll get started. So I have a couple requests. Um, we had some requests for neck and back and then specifically low back. So if there's anything else that is feeling tight or sore from your running or your workouts this week um, or maybe just life in general, then please let me know and I'm happy to try to weave it uh, into the class. So start to get settled and once you've got everything, just go ahead and lay on your back or find a place that's comfortable and wait for your friends to join you. Hi, Jen. Okay, we'll go in about one more minute. Um, still just giving people a chance to log on and find the live view. Miley's here, she's ready. Oh, she's leaving. Um, again, block is recommended or a book, something to support your low back for um, a bridge pose and then uh, something soft to put underneath your knees, like a towel or a blanket.
Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome to Sunday morning yoga. I'm happy that you're here, whether it's your third time or um, your first time. This new kind of routine brings me very much happiness and joy to do with you from my house to your house. So um, let's just start out in a comfortable position. I am standing just so that I can keep an eye on the technology, but you are welcome to lay on your back. You're welcome to sit in a comfortable position, maybe crisscross your legs. You can also stand if you um, want to feel tall and strong. Um, you can do that, but we're just going to take a couple minutes to center your practice and kind of leave the outside world and really come onto your mat and kind of focus um, inwardly for the next 30 or so minutes. So I'd like to invite you to close your eyes if that is comfortable to you. Try to notice all the points of contact that your body makes with the mat. And this will vary depending on the starting position that you choose, but really notice where your body makes contact with the earth and feel supported around those points so that you can completely relax around those touch points. Good, next we'll bring attention to the breath. So um, if you're not already, let's start to breathe in through the nose and just let a comfortable exhale out of the mouth. So we'll take a deep breath in through the nose, fill up as much as you can, and a slow exhale out of the mouth. We'll continue to slowly deepen and expand these breaths over the next several rounds. So as you're in your starting position, um, see if you can extend the length and the depth of the inhale as you also extend and lengthen the exhale. So these will kind of work hand in hand. We'll take it even a step further today. Um, wherever you are, again, let's place one hand on your belly, low belly, kind of right over your belly button, and the other hand on your chest. And I want you to see if you can cause just the lower hand, the hand on your belly, to move. So we're breathing so deep down into the abdomen um, and kind of in between the diaphragm here and the pelvic floor here. You're gonna breathe into that space so that your belly rises up or pushes out as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, it passes back down. And see if you can do this without the top hand moving. Good, let's do three more rounds. Last one, big deep breath in through the nose. Bottom hand lifts and big exhale out of the mouth, almost like a sigh. Bottom hand falls. Okay, we'll start to actually move into some of the movement of today. And um, if you're standing, if you chose that starting position, let's go ahead and sit down. We'll start with some head and neck stuff. Hi Miley, scoot over. So, we'll come to sit in a comfortable position on the ground. That might be crisscross for some of you. Um, it could be with your legs extended out in front. But you just want to pick something that you could sit in for a couple of minutes. We're going to go through a couple of different rounds of stretches here. Um, so, crisscross is what I prefer for myself. Um, and then, just think about sitting up nice and tall. So, a lot of times when we are sitting in a chair or on the floor, we kind of round down through our back, uh, but let's inhale to lift the chest, shoulder blades go down your spine on the back side, 
And just take a few more deep breaths here. If it's helpful, place your hand over your belly button to have that low belly breathe and your chest stay as still as possible. One more time. On your next inhale in, we'll sweep the arms up overhead, interlace the fingers, flip your palms up, and really, it's almost like a first of the morning stretch. Really press your palms up, lengthen. One full breath here, deep breath in, and big exhale out. Deep breath in, press your palms up, and exhale over to the right side. Keep your fingertips together. Inhale to lift back up through center, and exhale to the opposite side. Good, let's go one more time to each side. Big inhale, reach up. Exhale, bend. Try to keep both sides of your hips locked into the mat so we're not rocking over to lose our balance or rooted down. Inhale, reach up. And exhale over to the first or second side. It's easy. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, drop your hands down to your lap. Take a couple shoulder rolls. That one can be pretty intense, possibly. So we'll loosen it up. Okay, had a request for some neck and shoulder work, so we'll go into that next. Try to think about aligning your head right over your shoulders. So a lot of times we're reaching forward a little bit from looking at our phones or computers all day. So just pull your ears back so they're lined up right over your shoulders. Then we'll take a deep breath in to sit up again. And just exhale that right ear over to the right shoulder. For most of us, this will produce a pretty intense stretch on that top side of the neck. However, if you would like to add on a little bit and feel a little bit more, you can take the opposite hand down to the mat and just kind of energize through your fingertips to press into the ground. And if you would still like some more, you can bring the same side hand to the top of the head. Don't pull, just let the weight of your hand Add a little bit of stretching sensation. Once you're settled in, we'll take two rounds of breath. Deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Deep breath in. And exhale, let it go. So we'll come out of this in reverse of how we entered. So that hand on your head will come back down to your knee. The hand on the ground will come back down to the other knee, and then we'll inhale the head up through center. Take a couple of shoulder rolls. Good, hands in your lap. Deep breath in, sit up tall. To the opposite side, left ear over to left shoulder. Notice how it feels different from the first side. Honor yourself today if this is as far as your body is letting you go. Stay here. If you would like a little bit more, take the opposite hand, the right hand, to the ground. Energize through your fingertips to press into the earth. That same side hand, the left hand, comes to just gently rest on the top of your head. Not pulling, just the weight of the hand adds a tiny bit. Two deep breaths in. And out. One more time. Good, we'll reverse that. So the hand on the head comes down first, then the hand on the ground comes in second, and your head comes back up through center. Okay, take your gaze straight ahead. We're gonna move through the no motion just a few times, nice and slowly. So take your head to the right just as far as you can nice and slowly so you can look over that right shoulder then come back through center take it over to the left nice and slowly come back through center let's go one more time to each side to the right and to the left We'll 
come back through center and this time we'll do the yes motion again very slowly this one can feel a little more intense with the look back so listen and honor your body we'll come through center drop your chin to your chest And then come back up through neutral. Look up only as far as your neck will let you. There's no need to try to drop the head all the way back behind you. And we'll come back down chin to chest. Come through center and lean back just as far as feels good to your head and neck. Come back through center. We'll add on here, this is gonna enhance the stretch through the chest, so you'll interlace your fingers behind your head and your thumbs will run down the sides of your neck. Um, my index fingers are kind of at the base of my skull, right where my neck joins, and then my thumbs are at the sides of my neck. We're gonna move with the breath here. So as you inhale, try to lift through the chest, open up through the elbows, and then as you exhale, You'll gently tuck your chin down, elbows come together. Again, do not pull on the head, just the weight of the hands. We'll inhale to lift up, lift the chest, exhale to come down. One more time, inhale to lift up, and exhale to come down. While you're down here, release the hands to your lap and just let your head float back up through center. Very nice. Okay, grab onto your knees with your hands. We're gonna do a little, um, I don't know the name of this, but when I was in yoga school, they taught us to think about your spatula, trying to scrape the sides of a brownie bowl, batter bowl, so um, try to visualize that. So we're gonna make big circular motions. You'll be anchored down through your hips so you're not rolling all over your mat you're kind of anchored into the ground and then the column of your spine is rotating around inside your hips so hold on to your knees and we'll lean to the side lean to the front and around use your knees to help you lean to the back we'll go two times around this direction And then when we come through the back, we'll pause and switch the direction of your spin. And I think so. My teacher used that analogy to encourage us to really make sure that we leaned as far into each side as we could to get all the batter off. So maybe we'll just call that like a batter, batter circles. The next time you come through the back side, we'll pause there. Bring your hands back to your knees. Close your eyes, please. You can have your palms down if you want to feel grounded and connected to yourself, or you can take your palms up if you want to be open and receptive to things that come your way today. Both are good. And now that we've moved and breathed a little bit, just take a little body scan and notice what has changed, what has moved around, and if anything new has come up that you need to pay attention to as we continue to move in our practice today. Good, one more deep breath here. You can slowly open your eyes. We'll be changing positions now. So there's a couple ways. We're gonna come up to a standing position. If you just want to get up how you can from um, the seated pose, you can do that. I'm going to walk us through a downward facing dog if you prefer that way. So we'll kick our feet out behind us. Watch out, Miley. And we'll come um, to a downward facing dog position. Your hands are up towards the top of the mat. You'll tuck your toes in the back and lift your hips up and back <laughs> to the ceiling. Take a couple breaths here. We'll have more opportunities for down dog in practice today, so don't worry about trying to get everything that you need. Raise up on your toes and tiptoe your way to your hands. 
and then we'll slowly stand. Good. So everyone should be at the top of their mat or their space in a standing position. Um, let's take a moment to gather up that soft blanket or pillow that you're going to use for your knees. Um, if you missed the start of class and didn't know to grab that, take a moment to just go ahead and grab that. Um, we're going to be kneeling a little bit and it's just more comfortable to have some padding underneath your knees when we do that. So um, we'll start at the top of the mat. Take a deep breath in as you reach your arms up overhead. Get as tall as you can. And as you exhale, we're gonna fold down to reach for your toes. Good, let everything kind of collapse towards your legs. Your chin will tuck to your chest at the bottom if you're able. And then we'll take a breath in. Put your hands to your shins as you lift your spine. So we're just elongating through the spine. So it's about parallel to the floor. Exhale, roll back down, hands come down towards your ankles or your feet. And then we'll inhale to stand up. Big reach, nice job. Exhale, hands to your heart. So I'm gonna turn to the side just so you can see a little bit more of what that half lift looks like. We'll go through that again. Take a deep breath in, reach your arms up. And exhale, fold down. Notice my hips, hips shift back. My knees are bent as much as they are needed as I reach for my toes. Okay, so here's that collapsed forward folding motion. And then for the half lift, I'm bringing my hands up to my shins, lifting through the spine so that I'm about parallel to the floor. And my gaze is still down at the floor, but my head energy is really reaching towards the side. So this should feel like a little bit of work. And then you exhale, and this is very much stretch and relax. All right, let's try that one more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Pause for a moment. Then we'll inhale to reach up. Exhale, dive down, hips move back as you come forward. Hands reach for the ground. Release into the stretch. Then we'll inhale, hands come to shins, energize the top of the head and the spine, lifting. And exhale, fold down. Very good, let's take some time here in your forward fold. So you're reaching down for the ground. It's okay if your hands don't touch. Um, but add on here however you'd like. You can kind of sway side to side some. You can grab behind your calves and gently pull yourself a little deeper into the stretch. Lots of ways to play around with your forward fold. Okay, take a deep breath in. We'll raise up again. So lift through your chest first and then energize through your feet to help you stand. Exhale, hands to your heart. Close your eyes. Let your hands rest at your side with your palms facing forward. This is mountain pose. Feel the energy of the earth and your mat underneath you. Let it travel up your legs, through your hips, up your spine to your shoulders, and then to your neck and your head. So mountain pose here is a great um, standing energy pose. You can hold here and take a few deep breaths. Okay, on your next breath in, we'll reach the arms up overhead. Exhale as you shift down, hips go back. Inhale to lift, hands to your shins. Exhale to fold. This time, we'll take the right foot back to the end of your mat. The left foot stays at the front, and we're in a nice big lunge position here. So your hands are on the floor inside of the left foot. 
The right toes are tucked with the heel up and you're energizing through that back heel. This is where that book may come in handy. You can use it to help you prop up if it's a little bit tough to get to the floor. Good job. Find your breath if this is especially intense, maybe on the front side of the right hip or the back side of the left hip. You also have the option to drop the knee down in the back. So I'll turn to the side so you can see this. We'll hold here about three more breaths, whatever variation you choose. So here's the starting variation with your toes tucked in the back, knee is up and you're really energized through that right leg. You can also bring the right knee down to rest on your pillow or your blanket and still let your hips drop down. Lift through the chest, whatever you choose. One more deep breath. Now, if your knee is not down on the right side, let's go ahead and bring the right knee down to the pillow or blanket. Very good, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we'll shift your weight back so your hips come over the right knee in the back and then shift your chest so it's folded over the left leg in the front. This is a little hamstring stretch for the left leg. We'll hold for three more breaths. You have the option to stay still here, or as you inhale, you can slide forward back into that lunge. And then as you exhale, you can move backwards into the hamstring stretch. So inhale to come forward. Again, this is just an option, completely up to you. Exhale to press back. One more breath, inhale. and exhale. Good, on your next inhale, we'll come back to that lunge stance, but we're gonna bring the hands up to rest on the thigh here. So this is a great time. Again, please use a blanket or pillow if you have one available. No need to work through any pain in your knees to let this happen. We're gonna take a deep breath in and the right arm or the same arm as the knee that's on the ground, We'll reach up and over to the left side. So this lunge here can be as deep as you'd like. I am pretty much in a 90 degree lunge, not a whole lot of stretch going on um, through the lunge stance. But you can always creep the left foot forward if you want a little bit more. Good, inhale, both arms up. And exhale, reach back just a tiny bit, as much as is comfortable to your spine. Take a deep breath in, reach up. Exhale, come back down. Hands come to the mat. Tuck the toes in the back to lift the right knee up off the mat and step the left foot back to meet the right. We're in tall plank. One deep breath in and exhale, slowly lower yourself down to the mat. Release completely, you're supported by the earth. Without using your hands, inhale to lift your chest, elbows reach back for your hips, and exhale, come down. Press yourself up to your knees, then tuck your toes. We're coming back to downward facing dog. We'll stay here for a few breaths. So, turn sideways. Your heels are reaching down, but they do not have to touch. Just try to energize through them to give you a great stretch of the backs of your legs. You can also alternate bending one knee and kind of rotating your hips side to side. And then really press into your hands, your fingertips to send your chest towards your thighs. One more deep breath here. Then we'll inhale, look forward, raise up on your toes and walk yourself to the top of your mat. Collapse in this forward fold, everything's loose to the ground. Then we'll inhale, reach the arms overhead. 
and exhale, hands to your heart. Before we go to the other side of the lunge, I want to toss in a little balance practice for us. Um, so come to the top of the mat. Let's bring your attention to the right foot. Start to wiggle the right toes as you lift them up off of the ground. A lot of times what we end up doing is kind of gripping the earth with our toes to help keep us balanced. But let's lift the right toes up off the ground. Keep the rest of your foot on the mat. Now look down. Again, we're just focusing on the right side. See if you can separate your toes from one another into yogi toes. So no toes are touching. Good. This next drill, try to put the four smaller toes or four finger toes down and keep the big toe lifted up on the right side. Good. Really press into the earth with those four outside toes. Lift the big toe up. Nice job. Now we're going to switch. So we'll press the big toe into the mat, lift the four outside toes, separate them. Good job. Okay, this time lift all the toes, separate them. And from the pinky toe into the big toe, we're going to set one down at a time. So pinky toe goes down, then fourth toe goes down, then the middle toe goes down, then your index toe, and then your big toe. Okay, so release. Nice job. We're going to stand on the right foot and inhale to bring the left knee up out in front of you. Bonus points if you have a dog or a child throwing you off balance a little bit. Good, so we're here. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, open the knee to the outside and then bring the foot into the calf. This is tree pose. Your hands can reach down to the ground. They can come to rest at your heart. We'll take three breaths here. If you need a little more rooting into the earth, just drop those left toes down to uh, kind of hold you up. Stand up nice and tall. Pull the left knee back towards the back of the room. Good, and exhale, bring the left foot back down to the mat. Release the hands and shake out the knees some. So we'll do that same toe drill on the left foot this time. Um, raise your left toes up off the ground. Try to separate them from one another. Good, we'll start with the four outside toes pressing down into the mat, the big toes lifting up. Once you've got that down, press the big toe down into the mat. The four outside toes lift and separate them if you can. Try to notice what your hands do as well. My fingers always go crazy when I'm trying to focus on my toes. Separate, separate. Okay. I need to practice this more and so it's not cooperating. All right, now we'll lift all the toes up, separate them wide, and starting with that pinky toe, press one toe at a time back into the mat. Very good. Now we'll release the toes, kind of wiggle them out. Inhale to bring the right knee up out in front of you. Hold this here. Once you feel steady, open the knee to the outside and then bring the foot into the calf. Tree pose on the left side. Stand up tall. Hands can come to your heart. Ooh. One more deep breath. Very good. Let's release the right foot back down to the mat. Shake the knees out. If you're not at the top of your mat, let's come there. We're going to step back into the lunge on the other side. So this time, the left foot will step back. Take a deep breath in. Reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale to lift the spine. Head reaches forward. Exhale, come down. 
Left foot will step back this time. We're in the lunge on the right side. So bring the hands to the inside of the foot. And just ease into this. Again, depending on your body and your hips, we'll all feel this in different ways. Um, but if something feels intense right away, take a deep breath in to meet that feeling and then exhale some of that tension out as you slowly let your body ease into the pose. If it becomes painful or too much, please, please come out. We never want pain in our practice. One more deep breath here. And we'll have everyone come down onto their knee in the back. Untuck the toes. Make sure that you've got um, a pillow or a blanket under the left knee. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, we'll shift the weight back over the left knee. Your chest comes forward over the right knee. And so you have the same option on this side to stay here in this fold over the right side. Or you can inhale, walk your hands back into that lunge, stance, lift through the chest, and then exhale, come back. So it's just up to you if you like the movement. I do then move with your breath back and forth. If you want to hold the stretch a little bit, then just stay with your hips back. Exhale, come back. One more round of breath. Inhale forward. Lift the chest. Exhale back. Okay, inhale forward last time. And then we'll bring the hands up to the knee. So again, the length of your lunge stance will determine how intense that stretch feels. So adjust as you need. Then we'll inhale the right arm up, or left arm, excuse me, and reach over to the right side. So this should deepen the stretch all the way from your wrist down under your shoulder to your hip flexor. The longer your stance is, the more you'll get into the hip flexor. So adjust for you. Good, inhale, come up, and exhale, come back down. Hands inside the foot. Step the right foot back to meet the left. We'll do our last downward facing dog. Raise the hips up, reach the heels down. Hello, Miley girl. She's frustrated I won't play with her. Inhale, come forward, drop down to your knees, and exhale, sit back into child's pose. So for child's pose, my hips come to my heels, and my body comes down onto my thighs. You can adjust this by taking your knees farther apart if you want more into the hips. And then you fold down. I have a dog in the way. But reach down for the ground. If that is too intense for your hips, then just bring your knees together so that your body is not having to sink down um, in between your hips and add that stretch there. And then your torso would just rest right on top of your knees. One more deep breath in your child's pose. From there, we'll make our way onto your backs. So do it in a way that is comfortable and familiar to you. And this is where, if you have the block or the book, I would recommend grabbing it. So I'll turn to the side for this one too. So once you're on your back, um, Bring your feet flat to your, the floor. Knees will be up to the ceiling. And when you're just laying here, um, your back is naturally arched because of that natural curve in your spine. But we're gonna do a few rounds of pelvic tilts to um, kind of massage out those lower back muscles and um, practice activating through the core. So on your inhale, try to really relax into the curve of your spine. It might almost um, extend even more. 
And then on your exhale, use your belly button and your core muscles to roll your hips back so that you eliminate that curve in the spine and your low back is pressing into the mat. So it's just a little bit of work for your abdominal muscles, um, but not very much. And then inhale, release the core, let that curve come back into your spine and exhale, tuck back down. Continue to move like this. I'm gonna stand up to kind of also try to show you how this is working. So on your inhale, you really let the curve of your low spine be there. And then on your exhale, you pull down so your low back is flat on the mat. And then you inhale, let it elongate as you relax. And then you exhale and you press it down. You could also do this standing against a wall, which can help you um, kind of feel that rock and roll a little bit better. But for now, just stay on the floor. We'll continue to work on it because pelvic tilts are an excellent um, exercise. Next, we'll bring your feet flat to the floor. All right, watch out, puppers. Have the, the book or block close by. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, press into your feet to lift your hips up off the ground. This is bridge pose. It's a tiny, tiny, safe back bend. Pressing into the whole foot on both feet. Take a few deep breaths here. And then if you've got the book close by, we're just gonna slide it underneath your sacrum or your lowest part of your back. So I would use the flat like cover side of the book, should be what is meeting your low back. And then slowly lower down. And now you can take all the weight out of your feet and rest your hips onto this book. If you feel any pinching in your vertebrae, slide the book down a little bit closer to your glutes. You don't wanna feel any like compressing or um, pinching in the vertebrae. It just means the book needs to move down your spine a little bit. So from here, you've got a couple options. Um, you can extend your feet out so that your heels are resting on the floor and you're kind of relaxed over the book. Or you can keep your feet here for a little more support and then maybe play around with taking one foot up and then the other or just taking one foot at a time. So play around with this for just a few rounds of breath. Um, if you find that you are tight in your hip flexor or those lunge positions were tough on the front sides of your legs, go ahead and extend your feet out over the mat, over the book. A lot of times our low back pain actually comes from having really tight hip flexors, and so this is a great way to relax and release through that position. We'll be finishing next with your pose of choice. If there's a stretch that you feel that you really needed today that we didn't do, you can take a moment to give that to yourself. If you're feeling really good where you are, you can stay right here for a few more breaths. before we move into the final resting pose. If you are still on the book, bring your feet flat to the mat Take a deep breath in, press gently into the ground to lift your hips up off of the book and slowly lower your hips back down. Maybe take your knees side to side a few times. And then we'll go ahead and find that comfortable ending position, everyone's favorite, but also possibly the hardest and easiest to skip, but it's very important to Take this pose at the end of your class 
give your body and your mind time to absorb what it's done. And I would even challenge you to add this onto the ends of your runs and your exercise classes, your workouts. Once you've taken the knees side to side a few times, find stillness. It can be right here with your knees still up, maybe knocked in towards each other a little bit. You can go full corpse pose with your legs extended. But just find a comfortable, relaxed place on the floor. And if there's anything you can do to make yourself even the tiniest bit more comfortable or more relaxed, please do that. Maybe use your pillow or your blanket underneath your head. If you're chilly, cover up with it. Um, but the goal for this last part of class is to be completely relaxed. Start to, just as in the beginning, notice where your body makes contact with the earth. And see if you can relax your muscles around all of those points. Use your exhales to accentuate that relaxation, releasing tension with every breath out from your jaw from your shoulders, from your hips, from your legs, and from your feet and your hands. Be sure to check to see if there's any tension that you can release from your mind or from your heart. And just breathe out whatever that is. We'll take a moment to run through um, our classic meditation here at the end. So um, starting with your gratitude list, think of two to three things. You can pause to really appreciate something about today. And we'll move on to our love lift section. So think of someone in your life that you know very well or maybe not at all. Um, and think of them in a happy, warm, familiar place. And just imagine all kinds of love and support shining down onto them. And then picture a way for you to send that to them right now. third part of this is um, finding your intention or some kind of focus for maybe your day or your week. This can be a word like forgiveness or peace or it could be a specific task like something very concrete that you need in your life today. But go ahead and identify that for yourself and then commit to your mind that you deserve to have that and to work on that. And then finally, we'll end with as much time here on your mat as you need to listen to what comes up, what kind of answers appear when you give yourself time to be still and be quiet and connect your breath to your body. So thank you so much. Please stay here as long as you need. I'm so happy that we got to spend this time together. Next week, um, watch for some kind of announcement I will be traveling, so I'm not sure that I can do it right at 10 a.m., but we'll find some way to do this yoga together next Sunday. So have a great day. Thank you so much.